Hi, my name is Doris. Welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to talk about Is There Life After Vizio Makeup Academy? And the answer to that question is yes, there is. Pull up your favorite beverage. We're going to talk. Hi there, welcome again. This is Doris Makeup Artist, where makeup is transformative as well as informative. And as I said, there is life after Vizio Makeup Academy. However, you have to think about what you want to do afterwards before you go, before you even get started. For example, if you're someone who just wants to learn how to properly place make makeup <clears throat> and uh, your goals are uh, to become perhaps um, an influencer on YouTube, then um, I think it's really it's a good place to start. If your goals are to eventually go into either theater or into film and television, then it is the first step to many. Now, I am a makeup artist, and I have I like to, I actually like to call myself a baby makeup artist because I've only been in the profession for about five years. Um, if I want to exaggerate, four and a half, honestly. And I started um, right after I finished my course with Vizio Makeup Academy. I took the makeup and special effects. And then after that, I uh, went to the uh, makeup show, which is in New York City. And I believe they also have um, shows in Houston, Atlanta, and other parts of the, of the United States and Toronto, and they may have one over in the UK as well. Or I may be confusing them with another one, which is IMATS. But anyway, I went to the makeup show and I stuck to doing all of the workshops. And um, one of the workshops I took was color theory. Another workshop I took was for people like us, if you're coming out of um, school, where to start, where to begin. And one of the things I kept hearing about was, um, shadowing, apprenticing, and I heard that a lot. And one of the makeup artists, her name was Deshawn Hatcher, and she was talking about that a lot. She even said that she was gonna be publishing a book later that year um, about assisting and uh, how, to be, how to be a makeup, uh, how, how to be an assistant to other makeup artists. So I used that opportunity to talk to makeup artists at that time who were kind of mingling around and answering questions from the audience. And finally, I, <clears throat> I said to one person, I said, look, this is my interest. I'm interested in doing commercial. I'm also interested in doing special effects. I want to know how I can get some experience. And the first thing just about that came out of everyone's mouth was, um, you need to find a mentor. You need to assist. And I said, oh, my gosh. And one woman put it to me like this. She said, it's great that you've taken that first step but you're not going to really know where your mistakes are unless you have someone who's looking over your shoulder uh, telling you, you know, this is how you should, how you should do this. This is what you need to work on. And even though, you know, I had someone through uh, Vizio giving me that feedback, they're not there watching you. If you're doing the makeup on yourself, you get used to your own face. So it's best to learn how to do the makeup on someone else. Another suggestion they gave me was to get a job um, behind the counter such as at a department store like your Sephora's, at your um, Ulta's, your Blue Mercury's, those type, those type of places. Because um, you will have a chance to work on different types of faces and um, you'll get a lot of experience um, in how to put on color tone, how to um, adjust color colors on clients. And so I thought that was a very good recommendation. So talking about um, assisting and also talking about giving me suggestions on where to work was great. However, my problem was that I um, had just had a child and I really did not want to be um, working outside the home. So I wanted to have a more structure um, and the best thing for me was to find somebody who I can sort of once again, you know, make my create a schedule that I can follow. And which is one of the reasons why I chose Vizio is because you, you can do the classes when you have the time. So what I did is I started calling around and um, 
I looked for makeup artists who had experience in what I wanted to do. And I also looked for makeup artists who, um, who I, whose work I really liked. Because if I'm going <clears> to <throat> ask to shadow someone, I want to really like their work. And I mean, I don't want to be like falling asleep, you know, while they're, while they're trying to teach me. So um, I did find uh, two makeup artists, actually. And the first one um, was, uh, it was like a blessing because this was a woman who was very, very humble. I would, I looked her up on Instagram. She didn't hardly have anything on Instagram. So I thought, wow, you know, a lot of people have things on Instagram. Maybe what's going on here? Well, it turned out that, and you will discover this, that if they are a serious makeup artist and they're working, um, you will not see many Instagram posts uh, because uh, they're working and they don't have time for that. <clears throat> I think it's getting better that you're starting to see more and more posts. But, um, you know, the ones that are kind of in their uh, 50s and older, they're too busy. Um, and so I think I found like one YouTube video that she did and then uh, everything else. Um, was on her website. So she had a professional website, which kind of gave me an idea of questions to ask her. Called her up, asked her if she was interested in uh, teaching me. And at the time, I was interested in learning how to do HD makeup, um, tattoo coverage, and uh, also um, makeup for uh, TV, um, which is called basically called what you call hear about now called clean makeup. Well, clean makeup has been um, around for a long time. It's the type of makeup that you see on your news reporters that you see in a lot of commercials. You have to be able to, to know how to apply that uh, makeup so that it doesn't look cakey or streaky. And um, when I started, makeup was changing from, um, I'm sorry, film was changing in, uh, from SD to uh, 4K. So even what I had learned uh, about apl applying makeup through Vizio had become obsolete. So it was time for me to learn how to do apply makeup 4k I think now it's 8k so I joined um, I I agreed to take some classes with her and that cost me mm, probably an additional maybe fifteen hundred dollars and it was worth every penny of it for that experience um, I learned how to uh, do makeup on TV I learned how to cover up tattoos she took me with her on to, to weddings she um, helped me out and taught me how to apply makeup properly, um, things that uh, were missed, um, that I missed and thought I were doing well, I was doing great. She pointed out to me, you know, where I still needed to work on things. She introduced to me the concept of testing, um, which is like for another video. And um, I'm trying to think, gosh, I learned so much from her. I got a chance to... Um, do makeup on celebrities through her, got a chance to um, meet so many different people, it opened so many doors, and I'm very, very thankful uh, for her. And she was very, very humble. This is a woman who um, was originally from Mexico who studied makeup in Paris and, I mean, and was like, you know, ready and was sincere about wanting to pass on what she learn to other people. As a matter of fact, she said to me, what does it benefit me in this life if I die and I don't pass on, you know, what I've learned to somebody else? And I think me and another makeup artist who I know locally, um, who is now working for um, CNN, I think she passed that information on to us. And I mean, it's just, uh, what a blessing. Um, so anyway, um, so I had that. And then I wanted to do special effects also, and I found a makeup artist who did that. And I wanted to shadow her and just see what it was like because she did film and I wanted to get that experience. And so anyway, I um, followed her around and discovered I don't like doing film. So it's, that's very, very important as a makeup artist. You got to find out what you like and what you don't like. And I discovered that I don't like doing long, long TV productions or long films. I'm great for documentaries. I'm great for short stuff. Deliver me from feature films. Um, we started at 11 a.m. in the morning and we ended at 2 a.m. the next morning. That was our schedule. And I remember my husband uh, called me up and he said, this is not going to work for our family. <laughs> so it was, it was definitely like, no, you can't, you can't do this. So, um, 
uh, after that, I said to her, I said, I really still want to learn how to do special effects, but I think I'm going to stick with commercial because um, I think those hours are better. And she said, yes, they are. They're typically eight to 12 hour shifts. So I said, okay, we're doing, we're doing good here. And um, through my interaction with her, um, I can, I continue to assist her. Um, she's uh, started to uh, recommend me as a key for some jobs. And so it's been really a wonderful experience. Notice that I am talking about people I have met and relationships that I have established. To move forward, you have to network and you have to be sincere and you have to be available. If you contact someone and you say, I want to shadow you, I want to learn from you, um, and they call you up and they say, I have something coming up um, I think you'd be interested in, and you're like, no, I can't go, uh, that's going to look bad. And I am telling you this because I did this in the beginning and, um, and it will come back to haunt you because there'll be so many experiences that you missed. I actually one time missed an experience to um, do makeup or assistant makeup, I should say, for um, for newscasters for a sports team. And, and I said, I'm sorry, you know, I couldn't make it. And it was a reasonable explanation why I couldn't why I couldn't come because I had to take it was a family issue and I could not go. Um, but then uh, she said, you know, you missed out on three thousand dollars. <laughs> I was like, oh. So, um, you know, make, you know, when you start to do it, make arrangements, you know, if you need childcare, make arrangements, um, be flexible, make sure you have a family member. If you are single, this is the best time to do it. When you have a family, it gets more complicated because you have to make your schedule around your spouses or your significant other, your children and all that. But if you're in your 20s, go for it, do it, you know, take the time, do it. If you're at home living with mama and papa or, you know, just on your own, um, and you don't have to worry about, a, you know, paying for a roof over your head. This is the time to do it. Don't decide till later. I know some of you are like, I, I want to go ahead on and, and go to college. You can go to college. You can do that. You can do whatever you want to do. But if you have that free time, you know, if you're taking that little gap year or whatever some people take, do it now <laughs> and see where it takes you. And um, that's just my advice, because if it's really your passion, um, you know, things will work out. Um, of course, it's easy for me to say because I started off with a four-year degree um, and an advanced degree before, you know, making this, before I made this decision. But mind you, I made this decision when I was in my late 40s and right now in my early 50s. So you can do it no matter at what point in your life you decide to do it, but just make sure that you're committed once you decide to do it. So what have I been doing since all of that? Well, I've um, I have had a, the opportunity to do special effects for a um, organization and um, they actually have a commercial on YouTube and I will post that down here. Um, I also had a chance to participate in um, uh, uh, special effects from like the, the haunt industry and that's they call it the haunt industry. So if you work in um, at haunted houses and things like that. You don't get um, paid a lot of money because traditionally some people volunteer, high school students do it. But if you want to do special effects, I will tell you right now that it is the best way to get some online train. I mean, not online. It is the best way to get, to be able to work and get paid at the same time. First job that I had, um, I had learned, uh, involved le learning, um, how to use airbrush and Vizio Makeup Academy had airbrush included in the course that I took. So I was able to get the little temp two mm -hmm. um, airbrush and my air gun and all that. And I had all that to practice with. So when I went on my interview and they said, do you have any experience with airbrush? I was like, mm -hmm, yes, I do. And, um, and then everything else that I needed to learn uh, how to use the airbrush, how to blend and all of that, all of those things I learned on the job. I had a really good, um, I had a really good boss and, you know, he, um, provided us all with our own airbrushes. We had our own makeup, everything. And I learned on the spot and that is the best way to go. Um,
Okay, so I don't want it to be this video to be really, really long and I don't want to like ramble and I feel like I have been rambling. So if you have questions, please make sure you take some time to drop a couple of lines down below if you have any questions. Um, once again, I am going to include some resources that, um, that I use to help me move from um, Visio into uh, what I'm doing right now. One of the things I would say that if you're thinking, if you're thinking about um, doing any uh, program online is you ask about, uh, ask about what do they have available for their students after you've graduated. Um, I don't I, I don't know if Vizio has something like that right now where they partnered with makeup artists in um, in cities close to where their students live. I imagine it would affect how much your tuition would be, but I think it would be a great idea if online makeup schools would do that. I think Vizio, out of um, along with one other that I know of, has really started to gain a reputation as being rep reputable, and I think that what would really um, strengthen that are connections. Excuse me. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm losing my voice. One moment. Me, 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 me. Okay, I think I think I have my voice before I lose it. Allergies are really bad today. And as I mentioned in my first video, sometimes I lose my voice. Um, but anyway, um, I think what would really help is that for people who are really serious and want to go on, that they connect you with someone in your community who can kind of get your foot in the door and help you um, pursue that. Um, uh, wherever you go, ask lots of questions about um, what happens after you're done. Um, and if you have support, I do feel that Vizio Makeup Academy, um, that the president at that time gave me a lot of support. I remember um, when I took the classes, they had just pretty much come on the scene. And I remember um, I was trying to get uh, get my professional discount with with Mac and Mac gave me a hard time about it and the owner of the school actually contacted Mac and said hey you know this person should have a discount because they were one of our students and this is what you know this is what we do and this is what she's been studying and I got my discount so um, I have to say thank you so much to the folks at Vizio for going to bat for me because that enabled me to get my kit started. So thank you very much. And um, they're not sponsoring this video, um, but I am mentioning their name a lot because A, that's where I went. And B, um, I feel like I would not be where I am today if I hadn't started um, started with them. So, um, you know, I guess, you know, if FCC wants to say I'm sponsoring from that standpoint, then there's my declaration of, you know, having some connection with them. But um, other than that, I think that um, that's all I have to offer right now. I don't want to, like again, continue to ramble on because I, I want to be able to answer questions. There's so many people um, that are that are professional that are, want to help you um, and that are out there, but you have to put in the effort. I will say that nobody's going to give you anything. You have to ask. Um, you have to ask for the information. You have to be willing to look up the information. Um, I have people who have approached me and asked me to kind of to help them and I will tell you that um, uh, I'm going to give you some homework, you know, and, and depending on how long it takes you to do the homework tells me how serious you are. If you're the type of person who wants me to um, breastfeed you, I'm not going to do it because it wasn't done for me. Um, you're going to have to be willing to spend some money, so you're going to have to um, do your research. You're going to have to spend more money. Because unlike students who go to a brick and mortar um, school, uh, everything they sort of they get everything that they need. But because you know we're taking this route, we have to search for it. And if you're the type of person who loves finding out things on your own and doing things on your own, and if you're a go getter, then this is for you. If you're not, then seriously think about going to a, a school, a brick and mortar school. Um, you'll be there, you'll learn, um, just make sure you ask the same questions. If they have a plan for you after you graduate, because you don't want to end up sitting there kind of going, okay, what do I do now? Um, and I think that's all I can say right now. So, uh, the rest is on you. I hope to hear back from you and, um, let me know too, what other videos you'd like to see. 
um, me talk about or post. Um, I'm willing to do some reviews. I don't have a lot of time to do reviews. And sometimes I lose my voice. And so if I do a review, you might get one like the Ilya, um, Ilya one that, that I did, but um, you'll get something. And um, I think that's all, um, I think that's it. So take care, subscribe, and um, hit the notification bell so you can um, get updates. Take care, bye-bye. Mm-hmm.